This is a webinar to document the linked data functionality that's being done as part of the ASIC webinar series. There's a fuller, um, complete uh, webinar that includes um, this as well as other uh, components. Uh, but as part of my slides, I wanted to include a small section that discussed each topic. So this is going to be around about the uh, linked data processing in Mark Edit, particularly Mark Edit 7. So inside of Mark Edit 7, uh, there are multiple places where you can go to interact with and do reconciliation work within MarkEdit. This has been built on top of MarkEdit's linked data framework. That framework allows me to develop other tools that interact with uh, linked data services. For example, the validation tools that allow you to do some authority control that uh, interact with the Library of Congress's ID.lc.gov tools in real time as well as a handful of other tools that I've been working on to enable users to take advantage of some of this data that's being placed um, in the, the uh, linked data semantic web space. So uh, how would you interact with and use the linked data tools in marketing? Well, they show up in a couple places. First and probably most uh, obvious place, the place where most people probably interact with them is under Mark Next. Mark Next is set that's used in MarkEdit to surface research projects that are being developed uh, or as a start putting in information that demonstrates concepts that are beyond or looking uh, past Mark uh, as a format. So in this case we have the BibFrame testbed, the linked identifiers tool, OpenRefine integration, a Sparkle browser. The building linked data tool lives under the linked identifier. Inside of this space, you have access to the ability to do reconciliation work against your MARC records. Additionally, if you start uh, here, you can type uh, link data and you can insert link data. That will take you to the tool directly. If you're inside of the editor, the tool also lives under tools and link data tools and will enable you to interact with the data directly within the mark editor without having to do any other work. So we're going to start with it as a standalone tool and take a look at it really quickly. So in the standalone tool we have a source file, save file, and rules file. I'm going to show you the rules file in a minute. But these are the these these basically define uh, what you're going to be doing, which files you're going to be working with. So the source file is the file that hasn't been reconciled or has been partially reconciled. The save file is the output, can't be the same as the source file. And then the rules file tells MarkEdit how to interact with the data. So I have a sample here. This is my linked data sample. If I open this file up, we will see that inside of it, the subfield ones and subfield zeros, which are going to be created, are uh, present. So we'll go ahead and uh, run this file. So we'll go ahead and create move that into the source file location. We will go ahead and grab a save file. So that's going to go inside of my test files here. So I can either make it an MRC or an MRK file. I'm going to go ahead and put it here. Data sample process. And then I'm going to go ahead and decide what options I want to use. So if you use these three, it automatically processes most data, either in a bibliographic or an authority record, again, based on the rules file. If you want to embed uh, work ID into the record using the 753.58, I think, uh, you can use check this option. And if there's no CLC number, it can determine uh, work ID. It'll go ahead and pull it out. If you want to limit resolution to a very specific collection, you can use this option and it will only do resolution against reconciliation against a very specific vocabulary rather than detecting and automatically reconcile against every vocabulary that has been selected. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like this. Uh, if I'm interested in seeing if any of the services are up, I can ask it to tell me what services are online first. And so it'll go through the process and see what services are online. You can quickly see it looks like most are online. So we'll go ahead and process the data. And so MarkEdit uses a set of threads. Um, it goes ahead and it processes. So here we did one record, 28 lookups as part of that for one record. And so it keeps track of what's happening here and tells you 
how many lookups are being performed, and how many records are being processed. Records are processed in threads. There are roughly about eight active threads processing at any given time. That way the application can handle multiple requests against services, and then it waits after it, for all the requests on an individual record to complete before moving on to the next record. And that has something to do with the expectations that users have in terms of having the uh, file order, the record order in the file be the same uh, as the record order before processing. So the tool right now is going about processing the data set. I think there's 40 records here, so you can see about how long it takes to run. The um, records here have file, have data that's in both 1xx, the 6xx, the 33x, the 7xx fields, as well as the 880. So inside the rules file, there are places that there's a set of rules that allow MarkEdit to accommodate linking fields so that it can determine um, reading the linking field which fields they're linked to and then do uh, particular lookups based on that information. And that allows you to uh, do um, hopefully more uh, more robust linking because not only do you get the the materials that are in the, the Latin based languages most likely but you get the materials that live in the vernacular. So I I think we're roughly about wrapping up. I want to say there's about 44 or 45 records here, if I remember right. So this should be just about finished. You can see the process takes a little while. Uh, the way the Mark Edits Link Data tool works, it caches data as you search for it. So the more records you look at, the faster that the process works. So uh, in testing and doing some, some of my own work uh, in terms of doing reconciliation, over large sets of uh, data sets, sometimes up to a million and a half to two million records, as I get past a certain critical mass, since a lot of data elements repeat, the tool act actually stops having to look those up because so they're cached locally. And so then it ends up being materials that are more like um, names, which tend to be unique, that take the processing time, but the rest of the materials can be pulled from cache. So we finished the process. If we go ahead and look at the data that's been processed, we can see that URIs are generated. So in this case, Mark Edits rules file creates not only the subfield zero, which gives you the URI uh, the, to the individual vocabulary that's been used, but there's also a, a subfield one that's created that points to an aggregator. And in this case, I use VOF as the aggregator, uh, but there are definitions for Wikidata, DBpedia, you can add others uh, in, in the rules file, determine which, which uh, collections are searched under what criteria. So, so we did the processing. So let's look at the rules file so you can see kind of how, that, how this process works. So the rules file in the link data tool set is actually an XML file. And there are two interfaces. One is a graphics interface that allows you to see the data. So if we look at the 100 field, you can see that in the mark edit rules file, it processes only on bibliographic records. It reads these subfield data elements to um, use for reconciliation purposes. Data stored in subfield one. And we can see that the tool will do lookups based on always will run um, a lookup on the name authority file the dbpedia person file, and the vauth file. So it's looking at all three of those. Let's go ahead and look at it in the XML view. So the files, the, 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 few, the rules file itself is an XML file. So if we look at the XML file here, we can see what one of these stanzas look like. By default, in the standard implementation, this particular line will look like this. It's commented out. Most users probably um, may not want to look data up using DBpedia or Wikipedia. I have an internal process where it was useful for something we were working on, and so I went ahead and included that in my local instance. In the instance that's distributed by default, you'll see that line blanked out. So what's happening here is you have the tag which defines the field that's being processed, the subfields that are used as part of that. 
kind of the global identifier. Uh, where is the URL going to go in a, in a global sense? And then there's special instructions. How's the data normalized? And then this field actually tells MarkEdit, kind of overrides that URI element and gives specific instructions to the tool that if this is present, it's going to always look up in the name authority file. And that result is always going to go into the subfield 0. And it's going to look up v off, and that result is always going to go in subfield 1. We can see that the, there are a number of fields that have been defined. In fact, if we go back to the graphic interface, we can see that a number of fields have been defined from the um, some number of fields for looking at ISNI data, uh, the 3.3x's, three, three 3.7's. Um, three um, some of these are for BIB and authority, um, or just authority data, as well as the six fields, XX six, six fields. Um, and the 830 and the 880. So a number of fields have been defined and created, and again, um, record types processed are either authority or bibliographic or both. And then there are collection rules, and these define the individual collections themselves that have been created. And so you can see then inside the tool, say for the Japanese diet library, you can see the name, the control source term, that's the data that shows up in the subfield 2, the URI, which points to the Sparkle query or the API, um, the Sparkle query itself that's used to do the query, and then if there's any other information. So here we're doing a Sparkle query, so we're returning data in JSON. And so this is the path that we would use to actually pull the data from the JSON file that would uh, tell MarkEdit which value is the URI to insert into the record. And with those rules file created, MarkEdit then knows how to interact with the individual linked data services, and that gets built into the Mark Next tool. It gets built into this reporting validate headings tool, which allows me to validate headings and do some, some lo local authority control. It allows me to think differently about how I process my information. It obviously takes a little while to run. Um, just sitting here, we've seen it was two minutes to go through 45 records and just a shade under a thousand lookups. But the reality is that um, this reconciliation process is one that um, we need to be working on. And so this is one way for catalogers uh, who are interested in looking at uh, starting to implement this into their workflow. Uh, or probably where this is more useful, because I, I honestly think that in the long term, you'll have groups like OCLC and, and folks that will actually do some of the large national libraries embedding that into records so that we can just get that information creating links to those vocabularies that live outside of the National Library space or that are outside of the, the, the large national libraries that, we, that uh, we use primarily. So I would expect OCLC or somebody to do a large deal of the reconciliation for the Library of Congress's materials, uh, the vocabularies, but I doubt you'll probably see the rec same kind of level of reconciliation happen for data that exists, say, at the Japanese Diet Library or through the national, one of uh, any other variety of um, national libraries or Wikidata or what have you. Those are probably things, or even local data sets that maybe you control vocabularies that you provide through a uh, Sparkle endpoint. So those are things that MarkEdit's actually designed to work with so that you can create those and do that kind of reconciliation locally. So. That's how the reconciliation works in MarkEdit 7. It works the same way in um, all versions of MarkEdit, uh, Linux, Windows, or Mac. And uh, that's, uh, that's how it gets set up.